Welcome to the second video in Matter and Change. I'm starting on page two in your notes, so make sure to have those out and a pencil and possibly a highlighter. Okay, so properties of matter. A physical property is a characteristic that is observed without changing the chemical makeup of the substance. So, for example, I have some physical properties of iron. The color is gray, the volume could be 4.45 cubic centimeters, and a mass of 350 grams. These are all physical properties. I want you to try something with me. On your paper, describe the shoe below. Pretend you're explaining it to someone who cannot see and is considering buying it. How does it look? How does it feel? And how much does it weigh? So go ahead and pause the video for a second and write down a couple of properties or descriptions of the shoe. Welcome back. So how did you describe the shoe? Maybe you said it was blue and green, that it was soft, and then it weighs like half a pound. But, would someone be interested in buying just one shoe? Probably not. Which of these descriptions change when you're talking about a pair of shoes? So, if we look at this, let's think about it. They're still going to be blue and green, so that's not going to change. And they're still going to be soft, but is it going to weigh half a pound? No, this would change. The two shoes would weigh one pound. So let's see where I'm going with this. Physical properties of matter can be extensive and intensive. Kids are typically pretty bad at knowing the difference. So extensive depends upon the amount of matter present, meaning it changes with the amount. So things like mass, one shoe being half a pound, two shoes being one pound, and volume, how much space it takes up, changes when you have more of it. Intensive does not depend on the amount of matter present. These are constants for that particular substance. So for example, things like color, melting point, and density are constants or intensive properties. So here's another example I have for you. Okay, extensive. If I have two gold bars, the mass is now two kilograms of gold, so it's changing with the amount. But if I have two gold bars, they're still the color gold. That does not change, so it's intensive. Okay, chemical properties. It's a characteristic that's observed when the substance undergoes a chemical change or reaction. These properties show how a substance reacts with other substances. So these are interactions between two substances. For example, iron reacts with oxygen to form rust. It reacts with hot water or steam to produce hydrogen gas, and it dissolves in most acids. So this is how iron interacts with other things. That's a chemical property of iron. Next, I want to talk a little bit about density. Density is an intensive physical property, and it can be found by dividing mass by volume. This is an equation I will give you on your test. You do not have to have it memorized, but you need to know how to manipulate it. So mass, it's the measure of the quantity of matter an object contains, whereas the volume is the amount of space it takes up. I want you to try this on your own. It says, how could you rearrange the equation to solve for mass and to solve for volume? This is a little algebra review. Go ahead and pause the video. See if you can do it on your own. When you come back, I'm going to work it out for you. Oh, welcome back. So we're going to rearrange the density equation to solve for mass and to solve for volume. So I've got density equals mass over volume. We don't like to rearrange fractions. They're ugly. So what you can do is cross multiply. I'm going to bring volume up next to density to cross multiply. So what it gives me is volume times density equals mass. So this is the rearrangement to solve for mass. Well, I'm going to use this mass equals 
volume times density to rearrange and solve for volume. If I want volume all by itself, I need to get rid of density. So I'm going to divide both sides by density. If I do it to one side, I have to do it to the other. It cancels on the right side. And what I have is volume equals mass divided by density. You're going to need to be able to do that all by yourself. Density can be thought of as a measure of how tightly packed a substance's molecules are. So box A would be more dense than box B. A substance with a high density probably has massive particles that are closely packed. A substance with a low density is likely to have less massive particles that are more loosely packed. So which state of matter is the least dense? If you look at my pictures here on the right side, the least dense would be a gas. You see how loosely packed these are. The most dense would be solid. These are packed really tightly. And then at the bottom here, it says, what substance is an important exception to this? So I want you to take a minute and think about this on your own. Okay, I've got my little picture here. The substance that is an exception to this is water. And the evidence that we have to support this is that ice floats. As, as you can see, our cute little penguin here is sitting on ice that's floating on water. So ice is less dense than water. The density of a particular substance does not change with the amount of that substance. It is a constant for the substance. So density is intensive. And this is super important. I think I've said it two times or maybe three times already. So I really need you to remember this. Density is intensive. Okay, so here's a good example problem that we might give you for density. A cube of wood has a mass of 80 grams and a volume of 100 cubic centimeters. What is the density of the block? Okay, so let's do that part first. So to figure out the density, I'm going to do the mass divided by the volume. So I've got 80 grams divided by 100 cubic centimeters, and I find out that the density is 0.8 grams per cubic centimeter. The second part says, if you cut the block in half, what is the density of each half? And to prove it with math, so I want to go ahead and do that. So density is mass divided by volume. If I cut this cube in half, then the mass is going to cut in half, so it's going to be 40 grams. And then if I cut it in half, it's going to take up half the volume, so it's going to be 50 centimeters cubed. So, when I do 40 divided by 50, lo and behold, I still get 0.8 grams per cubic centimeter. What we just proved to you is that density is intensive. It does not change with the amount of the substance. It is a constant. Okay, now I've reached the bottom of page 2 in your notes, but I want to add one last thing about density. The density of water is 1 gram per cubic centimeter. Anything more dense than 1 gram per cubic centimeter will sink in water. Anything less dense will float. So in my little um, picture here, it says arrange the layers of the three liquids in the beaker in a way you would expect them to sort themselves. So we could pour these three things in the beaker and shake them up, and they would separate by their density. So I'm going to go ahead and put water in here. So water is one gram per milliliter or per cubic centimeter, same thing. Vegetable oil would float on top because it's less dense, and the corn syrup would sink to the bottom because it's more dense. This is how they would arrange themselves by density. That's all for today's lesson over properties of matter. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great